Hello, this is Lazarus at Telecom Tech, where telecom and networking technologies are simply explained. Today, we'll be simply explaining IP version 6. IPv6 is the most recent version of the internet protocol or the IP protocol. Now, like its predecessor, IPv4, IPv6 is a protocol that is used to uniquely identify and locate devices on a network. It's designed to address the shortcomings of the older IPv4 protocol, primarily its limited address space. Now, if you're not already familiar with IPv4, take a look at my video introducing the internet protocol to gain a deeper understanding of the differences between these two protocols. You can find a link to that video in the description below. The most significant difference between IPv4 and IPv6 is the address size. IPv4 uses a 32-bit address, which allows for approximately 4.3 billion addresses, whereas IPv6 uses a 128-bit address, allowing for that many addresses. <laughs> if you look at it in scientific notation, it's a value on the order of 10 to the power of 29. Now, to put that into perspective, that's 1 billion addresses per square millimeter of the surface of the earth. That's including the oceans. Let that sink in for a bit. Anyway, that's a lot of addresses. So in this way, we've resolved the address exhaustion issue of IPv4. But this presents a new problem. What notation do we use to write out these addresses? Well, IPv4 uses the dotted decimal format that we've all come to know and love. IPv6 uses a hexadecimal notation. IPv6 addresses are written as eight groups of four hexadecimal digits separated by colons. Here you can see some examples of IPv6 addresses, and you'll notice that they are of different lengths. Now, because they're so long, there are several standardized methods that are used to shorten them. We'll devote a whole other video on how to shorten IPv6 addresses. But remember, both the dotted decimal format of IPv4 and the hexadecimal format of IPv6 are there just for the benefit of us humans, because network devices actually read these addresses as simple binary numbers. But other than address space and notation, what else is new with IPv6? Well, for one thing, the header uses a slightly different format. Now take a look at the IPv4 and IPv6 headers. They have similar fields with similar names that actually perform similar tasks. You will also notice the difference in size of the source and destination addresses. But one of the most revolutionary characteristics of IPv6 is the use of what is known as an extension header. Now, notice in the IPv6 header, there's a field there called next header. The value in this field tells the network device receiving this packet if there's an extension header appended to the main header. And it also tells us what kind of extension header it is. Extension headers can carry additional information that's used to add functionality, including things like quality of service, authentication, and encryption capabilities. There are several extension headers that have already been defined, allowing a lot of these features to be an inherent part of IPv6. But also new extension headers can be defined in the future, which means that IPv6 is modular in nature and is thus designed to be future proof. Now, all of these characteristics have bestowed additional capabilities upon IPv6. Now, these capabilities include things like built-in security. While security was an add-on for IPv4, for example, the IPsec framework, in IPv6, security features are considered to be an integral part of the protocol itself. IPv6 has better support for quality of service. It provides a better platform for defining how traffic is handled, which can be used to provide better support for real-time data like video and voice. IPv6 also supports a feature called Stateless Address Auto Configuration, or SLAC. Devices can auto configure their IP address without the help of a DHCP server, or if you choose to, you can always use a DHCP version 6 server as well. IPv6 also has an improved multicast functionality. It's an improved approach to multicast, allowing for more efficient data distribution to multiple recipients. And finally, 
IPv6 also eliminates broadcasts completely. It's done away with broadcast communication, resulting in much more efficient network communication. Now, initially, IPv6 can be intimidating because it looks so strange and unfamiliar, especially to those of us who have extensive experience with IPv4. Looking at long strings of hex values is initially awkward, but over time, you will come to appreciate the thoughtfulness that has gone into the design of this new and innovative protocol. Indeed, I have found that eventually it actually becomes easier to deal with IPv6 addresses than with IPv4, especially when it comes to subnetting. This was my experience, and I believe that it'll be yours as well. I'd be interested to hear your views on the topic, so feel free to share them in the comments below. Now, before I end off, I think it's worth noting that IPv6 is not a new protocol in any sense. It was actually first published in 1995. And at the time of recording of this video, IPv6 has about 40% adoption rate on the internet worldwide. Now you can take a look at Google's tracker of the estimated adoption rate of IPv6 on the internet. And here you can see currently at least the adoption rate over the past few months and years. I have a link to this information in the description below. Well, I hope you found this video useful and if you have, please click that thumbs up button. If you'd like me to address other related topics, feel free to let me know in the comments below. And as always, please subscribe to get updates to newly published videos. I'm Lazarus at Telecom Tech. I hope this has been helpful for you and I'd like to thank you for watching.